Have you ever wondered how sugar is made? It's a key ingredient in our lives, sweetening our morning coffee, adding flavor to our favorite desserts, and even acting as a preservative in many of our pantry staples. From the humble sugar cube to the dusting of powdered sugar atop a freshly baked donut, it's truly a marvel of nature and human ingenuity. Sugar is so ubiquitous, it's easy to forget that it all starts with a simple plant, sugarcane. This tall, green, and leafy plant thriving in the tropical sun holds within its stalks the sweet crystals we crave. The process of turning this plant into the sugar we know and love involves a complex dance of cutting, crushing, boiling, and refining. It's a journey that takes patience, skill, and a deep understanding of both nature and technology. So let's dive into the sweet world of sugar, because the story of sugar is far more fascinating than you might think. Stay tuned to uncover the sweet journey of sugar from the field to your kitchen. Our journey begins in vast sugarcane plantations, where the magic starts. Imagine fields upon fields, stretching as far as the eye can see, lush with tall leafy sugarcane stalks, swaying gently in the breeze. This is where our sweet story begins. Sugarcane cultivation is a dance with nature that requires patience, skill, and a deep understanding of the land. It starts with the selection of high-quality cane sets, which are essentially pieces of mature cane stalks. These are planted in well-prepared fields, usually at the start of the rainy season. Sugarcane is a hardy plant. It loves the sun, a good amount of water, and plenty of time to grow. Over the course of 10 to 18 months, these tiny cane sets transform into towering sugarcane plants, some reaching heights of up to 20 feet. Throughout their growth, these plants are carefully tended to, ensuring they receive the right amount of water and nutrients and are protected from pests and diseases. Harvesting sugarcane is a delicate balancing act. Farmers must choose the perfect time to harvest, when the cane is mature but before it gets too old. This is because the sugar content in the cane reaches its peak as the cane matures, but starts to decline if the cane is left to grow for too long. The harvest itself is a sight to behold. In some places, it's still done by hand with machetes, a testament to the skill and strength of the workers. In others, massive machines rumble through the fields, cutting and collecting the cane in one swift motion. Harvested sugarcane is a fascinating thing. On the outside, it's a hard, tall stalk, but inside it's full of sweet, juicy goodness. It's this juice that will be transformed into the sugar that sweetens our lives. Once harvested, the real transformation begins. Post-harvest, it's time for some crushing action. The harvested sugarcane, now ready for the next step in its sweet journey, meets its fate in the crushing mills. These powerhouses of machinery apply immense pressure on the sugarcane, breaking it down to its core. Imagine the sugarcane as a sponge, soaked in sweet nectar. What the mills do is essentially squeeze that sponge, except in this case, the sponge is a tough, fibrous plant, and the nectar is the sugarcane juice that we're after. This juice extraction process is quite fascinating. As the sugarcane gets crushed, the juice is released, leaving behind the fibrous residue known as bagasse. This juice, a sweet, raw liquid, is the foundation from which sugar is made. It's a rigorous process, but one that is essential in the making of sugar. With the juice extracted, we are one step closer to obtaining our sweet delight. Next up, we dive into a boiling and crystallization process. The magic of sugar transformation truly begins here. It's like we're stepping into a sugar wizard's kitchen, where potions bubble and crystals form. To start, the extracted sugarcane juice is subjected to a boiling process. Don't imagine your ordinary kitchen boiling, though. This is a high-temperature, high-pressure affair that requires a specialized boiler. It's a controlled dance of heat and pressure, where the juice is carefully heated until it morphs into a thick golden syrup. This syrup, rich and sweet, is then readied for the next stage of its transformation. Crystallization. Now, crystallization isn't as simple as leaving the syrup to cool. That would only give you a hardened block of sugar, not the delicate crystals we sprinkle on our morning pancakes. The syrup is carefully seeded with fine sugar crystals. These tiny sugar seeds act as a nucleus, a starting point for other sugar molecules to latch onto. As the temperature drops, the sugar molecules in the syrup begin to slow down, and they start to arrange themselves around these seeds. It's a bit like a dance slowing down at the end of the night with everyone finding a partner and settling down. As the process continues, these clusters of sugar molecules grow, forming larger and larger crystals. This is the birth of sugar as we know it, the sweet crystals that make our world a little bit brighter. Yet, the syrup still holds many dissolved sugar molecules. To retrieve these, the process is repeated, with the syrup further boiled and cooled, again and again, 
until nearly all the sugar is extracted. It's a cycle of sweetness, a dance of boiling and cooling that gives us the sugar we love. And like pulling a rabbit from a hat, the wizardry is complete, and voila, we have our sugar crystals. These crystals, glistening and sweet, are the heart of the sugar we use every day. Now that we have our sugar crystals, it's time for the final steps. Centrifuging and drying the final stages in our sugar-making journey. We've seen the careful cultivation, harvesting, crushing, and crystallization so far. Now let's dive into how the sweet crystals we all love are separated from the syrup and then dried to give us the final product. Imagine a centrifuge, a machine that spins at high speed. This is the device that's tasked with separating our sugar crystals from the syrup. Picture a merry-go-round at a fair, spinning faster and faster. As it spins, the centrifugal force pushes heavier objects to the edge. The same principle applies here. As the centrifuge whirls around, the heavier sugar crystals are flung to the sides while the lighter syrup is drawn towards the center. The syrup is then removed, leaving behind a mass of wet sugar crystals. These crystals still need a bit of pampering before they're ready for your tea or coffee. They're damp and we need them dry. That's where the next step, drying, comes into play. Drying the sugar is a bit like doing laundry. Just as you wouldn't want to wear a wet shirt, we don't want wet sugar. Too much moisture can lead to clumping and can affect the sugar's shelf life. So how do we get our sugar crystals dry and ready for packaging? Well, the wet sugar is sent to a large dryer where warm air is blown over it, evaporating the moisture. It's a gentle process ensuring the crystals retain their shape and size while transforming from damp to dry. Once the sugar is sufficiently dry, it undergoes a final screening process. This ensures that all the crystals are of the right size and quality. Any oversized crystals or impurities are removed during this stage, leaving behind only the finest sugar. And there you have it. The sugar has been centrifuged, dried and screened. It's now ready for packaging and distribution. It's a meticulous process, but the result is worth it. The pure, sweet sugar that we all know and love. With the drying process complete, our sugar is ready to sweeten your day. Finally, it's time to pack up and deliver the sweetness. Once our sugar has been centrifuged and dried, it's ready to be packed. The sugar is transported to a packaging plant where it's carefully measured into bags of various sizes, from small sachets perfect for a single cup of tea to large sacks for industrial use. Each bag is sealed tightly to keep the sugar fresh and to prevent any contamination. But the journey doesn't stop there. These bags are then distributed to stores, supermarkets, and factories all over the world. Sugar, in its many forms, has a truly global reach. It travels across oceans, through deserts, over mountains, and into the heart of bustling cities. It finds its way into our homes, our offices, our schools, and our favorite eateries. It's a key ingredient in our lives, sweetening our days one spoonful at a time. From the field to the store, our journey ends here. So, that's how sugar is made. A journey that begins in vast, sun-drenched sugarcane plantations, where these tall, leafy stalks absorb the sun's energy to create sweet, juicy canes. Harvested by hand or machine, they are then swiftly sent to the sugar mills. There, the canes undergo crushing, a powerful process that squeezes out the sweet juice within. This juice, rich in sugar, isn't sweet just yet. It's boiled to a high temperature, creating a thick syrup, and then cooled to form sugar crystals. These crystals are spun in a centrifuge to remove the syrup, and then dried to give us the pure, white sugar we are familiar with. This sugar is then packaged, ready to be distributed around the world, ending up in our kitchens, enhancing our food and beverages with its sweet touch. Next time you sprinkle some sugar, remember the sweet journey it has been through.